as I told you, uh, there are uh, some of the questions that uh, uh, the, some of us were asking or texting me, and uh, uh, I would like to give the answer for those questions. The first question is, um, uh, did God create hell? That was the question. The first question, did God create hell? Okay. So before we uh, find the answer, I have a question that uh, is, do you, do you think the word hell is written in Bible or not? Do you think that the word hell is written in Bible or not? Uh, by that time, uh, uh, Justin, are you ready for the ready for recording? No. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I'm recording some other route, um, but when it's ready, I'll try to log in and start recording. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, yes, you know, uh, the question was, do you think that the word, word hell is uh, is written in Bible or not? Yes, it is It is there, man. Uh, I think around 23 times uh, the word hell appears in Bible. Uh, you just read Matthew chapter 23, verse 33. Matthew chapter 23, verse 33. Who is ready to read today? Maybe. You serpents, you blood, you broad of vapors, how are you to escape being sentenced to hell? Okay, so Jesus said, you serpents, you brood of vipers, um, uh, how are you to escape being sentenced to, to hell? So Jesus himself said about hell, and that is a reality that there is a hell. Okay, so the answer is, uh, actually, hell is a place of suffering, uh, which is prepared by God for the devil and his angels. Okay, hell is a place of suffering, and uh, this is a place which is prepared by uh, God for the devil and his angels. Then uh, he will say to those on his left, okay, it is written in Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41 says that. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who cursed, right? And uh, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So that, that's the reason I can say that this uh, eternal uh, hell actually was prepared for devil and his angels, okay? So the hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. God alone has the power to cast someone into hell. That's what we read in uh, Luke chapter 12, Verse 5. So that is the answer. God alone has the power to cast someone into hell. Okay? Because uh, in, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, uh, it is written that uh, Jesus holds the keys of death and Hades. Okay? So we will we'll be discussing that point uh, uh, one more time when, when we uh, when, uh, move on. Okay? So in Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, it says that Jesus holds the key of death and hades okay so uh, when i say this uh, you may have a question when did god created the hell when did god created the hell you know actually there is no direct mention in bible of when god created the hell uh, but there are there are different views about uh, that it's like uh, i mean someone believe that when god created heavens and yet hell also was included but hell is not particularly listed in, in, in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and 2. You know, when you read uh, Genesis chapter 1 and 2, we understand that uh, God's creation is there. But uh, some of the people believe that you know, when God created the heavens and the earth, uh, this hell also was included in, in, in that. At the same time, we cannot see the list of the uh, we can see the list of the creations in chapter 1 and 2 of Genesis, but uh, there it is not mentioned that God created the hell. Okay? And uh, the other view is, uh, uh, this is God created the hell after the fall of Lucifer. After the fall of Lucifer. That is the, the next view 
about the uh, the uh, about the uh, creation of hell. That means God created uh, the hell after the fall of Lucifer. Okay, and the other view, the, the next the third view is uh, uh, God created the hell after the fall of man. God created the hell after the fall of man. There are mainly three views about the creation of hell. The, the first one is God created the hell during the time of God creating the heavens and the earth. And the second view is God created the hell after the fall of Lucifer, after the fall of Lucifer. Then the third view is God created the hell after the fall of man. But as, 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 a, as a matter of fact, uh, I don't know exactly when the hell was created. This is the question that I got through the text message, okay? So I'm trying to uh, give you the answer uh, for that, I mean, question. Okay, so actually I don't know exactly uh, when the hell was created, but I, I assume the hell was prepared for the devil and his angels on the basis of Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. But after the, after the fall of man, God decided to send the sinners and wicked people to the hell. Okay, after the fall of man, God decided to send the sinners and the wicked people to the hell. Okay, so this is my understanding about when hell was created, or did God made hell, or was it for the the wicked people? Okay, this is my understanding, and that is the answer uh, from my side. Okay, then the second question. The second question is, uh, did God create compartments of hell? Did God create the compartments of hell? I know that uh, the reason that uh, why this question is coming, because I was speaking about the compartments of the temporary hell, the compartments of the temporary hell. So that's the reason that this question is raised. So uh, the answer is, there is there is no references which says that God created the compartments of hell but many times we see that Jesus himself uh, announced and introduced about the different compartments and the people, those who are destined to go to the hell. That's what we see in the, in the Bible. Many times Jesus himself announced and he introduced about different, different parts of the hell or different, uh, you can call it as a compartment of the hell uh, and uh, those those who, the, the people those who are destined to go to that compartment okay these many people or this uh, such a people are uh, supposed to go to this compartment and such a people are supposed to go to this compartment that means there are different names given uh, for the same temporary hell okay that means god only prepared these compartments for such people, for such people, okay. So uh, that is what we are going to study in our today's class. Maybe after uh, clarifying, uh, after clarif clarifying these questions, okay. And uh, even after today's class, also, uh, if you are getting any any doubts about these things, feel free to text me. Then I will be able to uh, give you the answer in the next class as much as possible. Okay, I will try my level best. Okay. So this is the answer for the second question. And now we will go to the third question. That is, uh, uh, does Satan have any control in hell over the souls? Does Satan have any control in hell over the souls? Okay. Uh, the answer is absolutely not. The answer is absolutely not. And just I will explain. The devil will be cast into the fire. The devil will be cast into the fire. And God is in control. God is in control. And God only has the authority to do anything on anyone. God only has the authority to do anything on anyone. That means even if the people are in hell, you know, Satan doesn't have any control over them. But God is controlling everything. Okay. Satan doesn't have the control over them, but God is controlling them. Okay, so I mean they are kept there, or they are you can you can call it as a, they are sleeping there, or they are kept there for a judgment. Okay, and during the time of the last judgment journey, they will be coming. So uh, uh, this thought will be cleared as we as we study study about the different compartments of the hell and also the destiny of Satan later. Okay. So you will get a more clarity about uh, those things, uh, I mean, later. 
And the fourth question, the fourth question was, will Jesus allow the souls in hell to escape during the judgment time with the book of life? This is a wonderful question. Okay. Will Jesus allow the souls in hell to escape from there during the judgment time with the book of life? We know that there is a book of life in heaven that we'll be studying later. There is a book of life in heaven. And the question is, so will Jesus allow some of the souls in hell to escape from there during the time of judgment? Okay. So the immediate answer for this question is never, never, never. Amen. But as we move on, we will get more clarification on the same question. I think that will be okay. Then now uh, we will continue the portion which we have been uh, discussing in the previous class. Okay. So we already discussed about the three compartments for the temporary hell, the place of torment, the outer darkness, and the bottomless pit. Okay, bottomless pit. Uh, now let us see who are destined to go to the place of torment who are destined to go to the place of torment. For, by the way, let me tell you one thing. You know, as I speak, speak something about the compartments of the temporary hell, you just want to know that we are not uh, sure that God made it as a, or may God divided it as a compartments, but God himself, Jesus himself, I mean, uh, spoke many times and many names for the, for the temporary hell. So that's the reason we are just, I mean, uh, dividing these compartments. And, you know, uh, when, when, we, when we move on, we understand that uh, uh, such people or a, a category of people, they are supposed to go to this compartment. And they, uh, I mean, the other category of the people, they are supposed to go to the other compartment. So that's the reason we are studying in this way that, I mean, God is sending some people uh, as, as such ca I mean, category of people to a, to a particular place and the other category of people to a other place. So we will see that, I mean, as we, I mean, move on. So the categories of people, it is time to go to the place of torment. And the place of torment is also known as the, uh, the place of Hades, Hades, and also the Sheol. Okay, the Hades and Sheol. These are the names of this uh, uh, thing. Okay, now, uh, those who are destined to go to that place, let us see the first one is the unsaved people or unrepented people. Unsaved people or unrepented people. Let us read Luke chapter 16, verse 30. Luke chapter 16, verse 30. And he said, no father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. Okay, so uh, this is, we, we know that we know about uh, the rich men and the story of rich men and the Lazarus, okay, the rich men and the Lazarus and uh, what happens there and uh, uh, th this is a big story. Uh, actually, uh, somebody said that this is a parable and uh, at the same time, at the same time, we can say that it says in uh, uh, verse 19, that now there was a rich man, there was a rich man, and he habitually dressed in purple and fine linen. So Jesus did not say that. Okay, uh, I can tell you one parable, but Jesus said there was a rich man. So we can assume that this must be the story which or an incident which already happened. So in that in the story, uh, Jesus is saying that, okay, these uh, uh, th these things are happening because the rich man is going to the the the, the sheol and or the or the place of torment and the same time Lazarus is going to the to the bottom of uh, uh, sorry bosom of Abraham. Okay, so we understand that the unsaved people and the unrepented people are supposed to go to the place of torment. Okay, and the second group and the second category of people. That is the luxurious and prideful people. The luxurious and prideful people that we can see from uh, two verses. The first one is Luke chapter 16, verse 19. Yeah, Luke chapter 16, verse 19, the same verse. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, who feasted some toastly every day. Okay, so this man is gone to 
the place of torment, or you can call it as a Hades or the Sheol. Okay, so he is uh, he is going to that place, and the reason is written there. He was a luxurious man. He was a luxurious man, and also he was a prideful people. The prideful people uh, that you can see in Isaiah chapter fourteen, verse eleven. Isaiah chapter fourteen, verse eleven. Your pomp is brought down to Sheol, and the sound of your harps, maggots are laid as a bed beneath you, and worms are your covers. Okay, so that, that verse also speaks about the prideful people, okay? When the people are becoming pride, and the, when the people are becoming luxurious, you know, God has given us uh, all the blessings upon every one of us, and we are supposed to use that blessing for our, our own purposes and also for others. At the same time, we are not supposed to live a luxurious life because we are the believers and we are the children of God. So when we think about these things, you know, there was a man, he was a rich person and, and he was spending his money luxuriously and also he was a prideful person. And in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 11, also we see that, I mean, the, the prideful people and the luxury people are supposed to go to the uh, place of torment, the place of torment. Okay, you know, uh, what would be the situation or atmosphere uh, of that place, of that place? Let us read Isaiah chapter 14, verse 11, once again, what, is, what will be the atmosphere of that place? Chapter, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 11, yeah. Your pomp. your pomp is brought down to Sheol, and the sound of your harps. Maggots are laid as a bed beneath you, and the worms are your covers. Or what a, what a, what an interesting verse it is. I mean, worms will be your blanket, and maggots, or it's a, it's a kind of worm, will be your bed. And then, our kidakim, our pudapum, blanketum, okay, and that is it. Okay, so when when the people are going to that place, the place of torment, we understand that the worms will be your blanket. The worms, puru, the worms will be your blanket and maggots, and that also is a it's a it's a kind of worm. Uh, it will be your bud. Okay, that will be the atmosphere of that place of torment. Okay, so listen. Uh, when a sinner dies, that person's physical body will be buried in this earth. Okay, this is the truth. Um, uh, his, uh, when when a person is dying, that person's physical body will be buried in this earth, but his soul and his spirit together goes to the place of torment or Sheol. Okay, the soul and the spirit together goes to the place of torment or Sheol. Now you may, you may, you may have a question: What kind of body that they may have as soon as they depart from the physical body? Okay, what kind of body they may have as soon as they depart from the physical body? The answer is: This particular spiritual body can uh, can have, I mean, something that means they can hear something and they can see something and they can identify the people and they can speak. They can experience the temperature of that place, okay? And that is what we see in the story of rich man and Lazarus, okay? So both of them were experiencing something and both of them were able to speak and they were able to experience something and they were uh, able to identify each other and all these things, okay? So we have to understand that the, when, when, when uh, the, the, the uh, spiritual body, that means after the death, and uh, we see that they can experience something, okay? That is what we see in the, in the story of uh, rich man and the Lazarus. So rich man uh, could see and hear, but if you, if you, if you ask the, uh, the shape of this body, uh, the answer is, I don't know, okay? I don't know what would be the shape of that body. I don't know about that, okay? But it is not written clearly, but we can see that it will be a, a, a like a spiritual body with the, the, the soul and the spirit, it will be there and it can experience something just like they can, they can speak or they can, um, they can speak or they can uh, hear or they can identify the people, the others. Okay, that's what we understand from that. But uh, let us see, I mean, what Solomon says about uh, the Sheol, what Solomon says about the Sheol, okay? Let us read Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. Whatever your hand, hand finds to do, do it with your might, for there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol to which you are going. Okay, uh, somebody can read that verse in Malalam also. So listen. So what is the situation of that place? What Solomon says. Okay. Whatever you find to do with your hands, do it with your you, your might, all power. Okay. That means whatever you can do now, you can do it. Very well, very good, okay? For in Sheol, where you are going, there is no work or no planning or knowledge, no knowledge or no wisdom. That means we cannot do anything from there. As soon as you reach there, you can listen, you can experience something, but you cannot take any plan there. Now we can plan something. That, that means we can plan here before, before our death, okay? We have the wisdom now. We have the knowledge now and we have uh, the power to plan something and we have uh, many things here and we have might and we have power, we have strength, everything. But now we can take a decision that whether I want to go to the hell or whether I want to go to the heaven. Okay, so this is the right time to take a decision. But if you, if you reach there in Sheol, you cannot do anything, you cannot plan anything. Okay, so whatever you have to do, do it here and try to take a decision that I just want to go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. Amen. So now let us let us see what kind of welcoming is there as the soul and the spirit reaches to the Sheol or Hades. Okay. So when the the, the wicked people's soul or when the sinner's soul reaches to the the the, the place of the or the place of torment or place of Sheol or place of Hades. Okay, when that spirit or the soul is reaching there, there is a welcoming, there is a welcoming. Okay, there are somebody to welcome these people. The soul of, or the spirit of these wicked people, the soul or the spirit of these sinners. Okay, that is written in Isaiah chapter 14, verses nine and 10. Isaiah chapter 14, verses nine and 10. Sheol beneath is stirred up to meet you when you come. It rouses the shades to greet you. All who are who, all who were leaders of the earth, it raises from their thrones. All who were kings of the nations, all of them will answer and say to you, "You too have become as weak as we. You have been like you have become like us." Okay, what is that? Sheol from beneath. Sheol from beneath. Okay, that means. Um, um, yeah, in Malayalam it is written, Ninde Varevil Dene Edirel Kuman Tare Padala, Tare Padala. Okay, so listen, I, I'm just taking that word from there. The Sheol from beneath is excited or un underneath of the earth, excited over you to meet you when you come. Okay, it rouses for you the spirits of the dead, all the leaders of the earth, it raises all the kings of the nations from their thrones, they will all respond and say to you, even you have been made weak as we, you have become like us. The people already there, they will welcome these wicked people's spirit and they will say, oh, even you have been made weak as we, you have become like us, amen. So that is that our okay in the Nim, Yangle Pole, Belihinayo, Nim, Yangle Katulinai Turnovo in the Parim. So there are some people already there in the Sheol, and those people will be welcoming the spirits and the soul of these wicked and sinner, sinners. Okay, that's what we understand from uh, Isaiah chapter 14, verses 9 and 10. Now we will see which, which is the third category, which is the third category which is supposed to be or destined to be uh, to be in the uh, Sheol, okay, or the place of torment. That is offenders, uh, offenders and sinners, offenders and sinners, okay. So for example, you can read uh, Mark chapter nine, verses 43 and 44. Yeah, Mark chapter nine, 
verses 43 and 44. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. Okay. So uh, when, you, when you think about those points, the temporary hell or the Hades is a place of unquenchable fire. Okay. Uh, this, uh, the, particu- the, the, the speciality of this place is, you know, this is, this is, a, this is a place of unquenchable fire. So you once again you read verses 48 and 49 also. 48 and 49 also. Yeah, same same chapter. Yeah. Where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched, for everyone will be salted with fire. Okay. What is the speciality of this Sheol or what is the speciality of this Hades or the place of torment? What is that? Their worms does not die and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. No doubt, this place of torment is going to be a horrible place. Okay, the, the, the place of torment is going to be a horrible place because, I mean, there the worms does not die and the fire is not at quenched. Okay, so everyone will be salted with fire. Salted with fire means Putting the putting the fire and after that again putting fire again putting fire. Just we are uh, we are putting maybe when when we are we are using the using the uh, fish or something. You know we keep uh, the salt again and again to keep that uh, as it is. Okay, without a, a, de- a decay, without becoming a decay. So the same thing is going to happen there in the place of torment that they will be when they will be kept under the fire. And again and again, they'll be putting the fire just like the salt. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the place, and uh, the people those who are going to there is I mean uh, separated that the offenders and the sinners will be the members of that area, that place or that compartment. Okay, now let us see uh, the second compartment of the temporary hell. The second compartment of the temporary hell is the outer darkness. Already I gave you the points, but now. I'm just trying to explain those things. The outer darkness. Okay. So the word outer darkness is, is I mean, explained or it is mentioned in Matthew chapter 8, verse 12. So in Matthew chapter 8, verse 12, we can see the outer darkness. Yes. While the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness, in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. Yes, the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into the outer darkness. So you can take this as a, as a compartment, the second compartment of the temporary hell. That means the outer darkness. Okay. And then Puratulla, and then Puratulla Irta. Okay, Puratulla Irta. Okay, so the outer darkness. Okay, it says that the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into the outer darkness. Okay, what is the sons of kingdom mentioned here? This is the unbelieving Jews. The unbelieving Jews is mentioned here as the sons of the kingdom, sons of the kingdom. Okay, that which we can see in the beginning verses of uh, chapter 8, maybe verses 9 through 11. When you study about uh, that points, you know, uh, chapter 9 to 11, we understand that, I mean, these people were unbelievers. That means they were not believing in Jesus Christ. Okay. When you study about the chapter 8, maybe from chapter 8, verses 1 through 11, you understand that these Jewish people uh, were not believing in Jesus Christ. So that's the reason that Jesus is saying to them in this particular verse that these people will be the members and these people are destined to go to the place of torment, okay? The sons of kingdom, that means the unbelieving Jewish people, okay? So that's what we see there. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, we, do not, we do not have to time uh, to, to explain all those things now, but uh, we will uh, go to the next portion that is, uh, uh, you know, the, the next thing is, I mean, those who are, I mean, are destined to go to that place, okay? That uh, this next group of people is the people not dressed in wedding clothes, 
the people not clothed in wedding cloth okay they are destined to go to the outer darkness outer darkness okay that's what we read in matthew chapter 22 verse 13 matthew chapter 22 verse 13 yeah great then the king said to the attendants bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness in that place they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth okay what is that i mean king said that what is that king said i mean bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness listen that word particularly I mean bind them and uh put them into the outer darkness in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth okay so very very it is very clear so who are supposed to go to that place who are supposed to go to that place the people not dressed in wedding cloth the people those who are not dressed in wedding cloth okay and let us see what is the spiritual meaning of this wedding cloth what is the spiritual meaning of the wedding cloth or what are the different clothes that a believer should wear to enter into heaven you know when you study bible we should have a a wedding cloth in order to enter inside the heaven so we will see what are the wedding clothes which is mentioned in bible that a believer should have to enter into the heaven the first one is mentioned in uh, isaiah i i'm not going to i mean read those verses because of the lack of time we will just move on okay you can just write it down and we will move on okay in isaiah chapter 61 verse 10 uh, we see the garment of salvation the garment of salvation okay and the second one is in isaiah chapter 61 verse 10 same verse that is the robe of righteousness the robe of righteousness okay and the third one is isaiah chapter 61 verse 3 that is the garment of praise or mantle of praise you can call it as a mantle of praise or garment of praise okay and the fourth one is sam number 45 verse 13 sam number 45 verse 13 that is the cloth of interwoven with gold the cloth of interwoven with gold which speaks about the strong faith of a believer strong faith of a believer the first one it is very clear garment of salvation the person who is having the salvation he is supposed to go to that place oh, sorry uh, he he is uh, supposed to go to the heaven and uh, the person who is having the robe of righteousness uh, that also we know that that person is uh, uh, ready to go to that place uh, the heaven and the third one is the garment of praise or mantle of praise which speaks about the 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 uh, uh, the attitude of praising god always amen and the fourth one is the cloth of interwoven with god which speaks about the strong faith of a believer and the fifth one is in psalm number 45 verse 14 psalm number 45 verse 14 says about the cloth of embroidered work the cloth of embroidered work which means the sufferings of a believer that means the believers must be ready to suffer for god suffer for christ in anything so the cloth of embroidered work speaks about the sufferings of a believer and the sixth one is in revelation chapter 4 verse 4 we will read only one verse okay you can read revelation chapter 4 verse 4 only yeah speaks about white garment around the throne were 24 thrones and seated on the thrones were 24 elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads okay so this is what we understand that you know uh, apostle john was just watching a group of people with white garment in heaven okay this speaks about the holiness of the believer holiness of the believers okay so these are the uh, garments or the the garments or so these are the wedding cloths that we can uh, uh, read in bible about a believer that he, he he or she is supposed to wear when he is reaching into the heaven now the other group of people who are destined to go to this outer darkness is mentioned in matthew chapter 24 verse 51 that is the hypocrites okay 
the next next group of people that is hypocrites that is in matthew chapter 24 verse 51 yeah yeah which what is that and uh, will cut him in pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth okay we are just moving a little more fast because of the lack of time so that the people those who are hypocrites they are supposed to go to that place which is known as the place of torment or the sheol or hades okay now the third uh, third compartment of the temporary hell the third compartment of the temporary hell that is abyss or you can call it as a bottomless pit abyss or bottomless pit which we can see in the epistle of jude chapter 1 verse 6 epistle of jude chapter 1 verse 6 that is the abyss or bottomless pit yes also and the angel and the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority but let, let left their proper dwelling he has kept eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day okay so what is the speciality uh, of that place and who are supposed to go to that place the abyss or bottomless pit which is written in jude chapter 1 verse 6 okay and the angels who did not keep their positions and authority but left to their own abode he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day that means so there there is no human spirits who are there in this particular place the in the in the abyss or in the bottomless pit who are the people those who are there the angels who did not keep their positions and authority but left their own abode he has reserved in everlasting chains under the darkness under the darkness okay so that means you know uh, we can see that there is no human spirit in the abyss there is no human spirit in this abyss or bottomless pit but a group of fallen angels a group of fallen angels are there in this compartment that is called the abyss or the bottomless pit so uh, it is written kept under darkness kept under darkness that means it may be the third compartment of the temporary hell i mean that means under the earth okay or under the darkness okay inside the earth so that is what we understand about that and again uh, we will read revelation chapter 9 uh, maybe maybe verse 2 um, uh, Revelation chapter nine, verse two. Yeah. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. <coughs> okay, we don't have time to read all these verses. Uh, you have to check with uh, uh, Revelation chapter nine, verses two to eleven. Okay. So what is that? The chained angels will be loosed from the abyss to torment. the people in the middle of the seven years of tribulation okay so when you read that verses we understand you know during the time of uh, the seven years of tribulation uh, i told you in from the previous verse that already the the fallen angels are locked there or they are chained there now what is happening okay these chained angels will be loosed from that place from the abyss for what to torment the people in the middle of the seven years of tribulation okay and even that also when you read uh, uh, verses 5 and 6 uh, verses 5 and 6 of uh, chapter 9 it says that they are coming not to kill the people but to torment the people not to kill the people but to torment the people so this is what going to happen okay during the time or during the middle of the seven years of tribulation these chained angels will be loosed from there god will loose them from there uh, from there from the abyss or from the from the bottomless pit and they will come to torment the people to 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 make trouble for the people but not for killing the people that's what we understand from verses 5 and 6 okay then uh, because uh, in those days 
men will seek death and will not find it. Can you read that verse also, maybe? Five and six? Yeah. They were allowed to torment them for five months, but not to kill them. And their, th and their, and their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings someone. And in those, day, in, in the, those days, people will seek death and will not find it. And they will long to die, but death will f flee for them, from them. Okay. What is that? Man will seek death and will not find it. Okay. They will long to die and death flees from them. Nobody can die even if they desire to die. Okay, that is going to happen in that place. Okay, and again, and again, uh, we understand that these, these are the three compartments that of the temporary hell. And also, let me remind you one thing that these are our assumption based on some of the verses of the Bible, okay? We cannot clearly say that, okay, these are the compartments and these are the things and which is going to happen. But at the same time, through these verses, we understand these are the div divisions that we can uh, get from the Bible references, okay? So we just assume that this is going to be and this is happening here, okay? So this is based on some of the verses of the Bible, okay? So uh, in the last class, I told you that the hell is divided into two divisions. Okay, the hell is divided into two divisions. Uh, that is the place of torment or temporary hell. And the second one is eternal hell, the eternal hell. And we already discussed many things about uh, the temporary hell. Uh, now I will give you some information about the eternal hell, the second one, the eternal hell. Okay, that is from Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. Revelation chapter 20, verse 10, the eternal hell. Uh, hell, yeah, read that. And the and the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and the sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were, and they and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Okay, so this eternal eternal hell or eternal death also is known as eternal death, the lake of fire, the everlasting punishment. Eternal death, the lake of fire, the everlasting punishment. These are the other names of this eternal hell. Okay. Uh, you know, what is going to happen there? Let us see. After the final judgment or after the after the rewarding of the saints of God. Okay. Uh, you know that uh, uh, the uh, everyone will have the judgment, but at the same time, the believers and the, the saints of God, they will not have any judgment, but there will be a rewarding of the saints. The rewarding of the saints means as we are receiving the reward now, when we win or when we overcome. So the same thing is going to happen. You know, when we reach to heaven, we will also have a particular time for rewarding for our good works. Okay, so God is going to do that. But the wicked people for the for the sinners, there will be a judgment. Okay, so after the final judgment, so we will study about later maybe. But after the final judgment or after the rewarding of the saints of God, the sinners or wicked people will go to the eternal hell. And the saints of God will go to the eternal heaven. Listen very carefully. After the last judgment or final judgment, the wicked people will be going to the eternal hell and the saints of God will be going to the eternal heaven. And about these things we will be discussing when we study from the next chapters of uh, book of revelation after completing this portion okay we will we already closed up to uh, chapter 4 revelation chapter 4 in the previous classes again we will be starting from chapter 5 in the upcoming classes so we'll be discussing more about these things in in that i mean class okay so uh, we have to read uh, some of the verses to know uh, about the place where the spirit of uh, the repentant believers goes after death. That means the, 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 the spirit of the believers, spirit of the, uh, uh, the of children of God, the spirit of the saints of God, where it is going after the death, where it is going after the death. Okay, so we will read one verse, especially there are many verses. We will read one verse from book of Job, book of Job, chapter 14, verses 10 and 14. Job chapter 14 verses 10 and 14. There you can see two questions of Job. Two questions of Job. Yeah. 
but a man dies and is laid low. Man breathes his last, but where is he? If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my service I would wait till my renewal sh should come. Yes. Okay. So uh, in this particular two verses, we see two questions of job. What is that? When a person passes away or die, where is he going? This is the first question. When a person passes away or die, when he, where he is going? And the second question is, if a man die, shall he live again? Okay. If a man die, shall he live again? Okay. So let me let me tell you one, uh, some more things about these things. You know, the physical body of both believers and unbelievers will merge, or you can say it is a mingle to the earth after the burial. Right? That is very clear. Okay. So uh, that is that is very uh, that's a common fact, and also uh, Bible support that that belief. Okay. You know, the, the, the physical body of both believers and unbelievers man, is going to be merged or going to be mingled with the earth or the mud after the burial, after the burial, okay? And that is the common fact. And there are different teachings about, uh, teachings, not only teachings and views also about among the religious leaders and philosophers and scientists and everything uh, about what happens after the death. Okay? They have many opinions and they have many teachings and views about what happens for a person after his death, after his death. Okay. What is that? Let us see, you know, the atheist, the atheist believe that death is the end of our life. Death is the end of our life. That means body will be merged with the earth and the spirit will be mingled with the air or atmosphere. Okay. This is the belief of atheist. This says that death is the end of our life. That means after death, there is nothing. The body will be merged with the earth and the spirit will be mingled with the air or atmosphere. Okay, that means they don't believe in life after the death. They don't, don't believe in heaven. They don't believe in hell. They don't believe in God. They don't believe in Satan. Okay, and the second and the second group, a second view is you know uh, that is the religious people some of some kind of maybe the hindu people or buddhism or jainism those people believe that there is a rebirth or reincarnation rebirth or reincarnation punar janma punar janma okay so that is the belief of uh, some of the religious people you know what is that after death they will reincarnate as a good animal if he did good works in his human life, okay? Suppose if one person is doing the good work in his human life in this earth, then that, person's, that person will be reincarnated as a good animal, good animal in the next life, okay? But if he did bad things in this human life, he will be reincarnated as a wild animal or bad animal. I think you got the point. You know that, okay? So if he is doing the bad thing, things in this world, in this life, then that person will be becoming or reincarnated as a wild animal or as a bad animal, okay? And this process continues for seven times or seven stages or seven lives, okay? Seven times this process continues, okay? So this is what they believe, that, that some of the religious people believe. But the third group of people, the speciality and the special belief of those people, the third group, they believe there is an eternal life after death and also there is an eternal hell after death. Thank God that we are believing in that group. We are in that big group. Okay? And the Christianity is included in the third group. The Christianity is included in the third group. What is that group believe? Okay, and we believe there is an eternal life after the death and also there is an eternal death or eternal hell after the death. Okay, and there is a judgment and there is a rewarding and we, the people, the believers, the, the repentant people, the, the, the 
children of God. We will go to heaven and heavenly places and the wicked people, the sinners will be going to the hell. That is the belief of the Christianity. Christianity. Okay, now, now we will uh, let, us, let us see what happens to the soul and the spirit of saints of God after the death. Okay, this is very interesting to I mean, study, but I don't know how much we'll be able to complete. Maybe, uh, maybe one or two points we will try to uh, uh, explain. Okay, so let us see now. Uh, that means, you know, uh, what happens to the soul and the spirit of saints of God after death? Okay, what happens to the soul and spirit of saints of God after the death? Okay. So we have to read uh, some of the verses to know about the place where the spirit of uh, repentant believers goes after the death, okay? Uh, you know, when you read Luke chapter 16, no need to read all those portions, but in Luke chapter 16, we read Lazarus died and the angels took him to the bosom of Abraham, right? It is very clear in Luke chapter 16, that, that's a story we already discussed about that. Lazarus died and the angels took him to the bosom of Abraham. And the bosom of Abraham is an, is an you can say, allegorical term or allegorical language uh, used there. Okay, the Old Testament saints, usually when they die, they believe that uh, uh, their spirits are going to the bosom of Abraham. Okay, the Old Testament saints always they are believing Abraham the Madi Lake Bogono, Alangil to the bosom of Abraham when they die, the Old Testament saints, they believe that that is a Jewish belief that they are going to the bosom of Abraham. Okay, that means you know uh, the, the reason is uh, Abraham is known as the father of believers. Abraham is known as the father of believers. Okay, and Abraham's bosom is equal to the earthly paradise. The earthly paradise is equal to the Abraham's bosom. Okay, so don't think that okay, all the people those who those who died in the Old Testament time they were going to the bosom of Abraham. Okay, uh, we know that uh, the bosom of Abraham cannot carry all those people. Okay, but you just think in that allegorical way, allegorical language it is used there that Abraham's bosom is equal for the earthly paradise. In earthly paradise, there was a paradise, and that is known as the Abraham's bosom. Okay, that's the reason in Genesis chapter 42, verse 38, Jacob says, okay, can you read that verse? Yeah, uh, Genesis chapter 42, verse 38. But he said, my son shall not go down with you, for, for his brother is dead, and he is the only one left. If harm should happen to him on the journey that you are to make, you should bring my down my gray hairs with the sorrow to Sheol. Okay, so you know, in in this particular uh, portion, we understand that Jacob uh, he lost Joseph and the other son also, and again, you know, he was so fearful about the loss of his son Benjamin. Then he said, "Okay, what is that? Then you shall bring down." my old age with sorrow to Hades or Sheol. Okay, in some translation it is written Hades and in other translation it is written Sheol. Okay, so we are just thinking about when where the, the spirit of the people, the, the believers will go after the death. Okay, that's what we are thinking. So here, uh, Jacob also is saying that, okay, okay, I, I, my, my, my um, spirit will be going to the uh, to the Hades or Sheol. Okay, and uh, again, in, in Acts chapter 7, we are not reading that verse, but in Acts chapter 7, we read about uh, during the time of martyrdom of Stephen, during the time of martyrdom of Stephen, Stephen, the heavens were opened and he was taken to the paradise. He was taken to the paradise. And also in, uh, in Luke chapter 23, verse 43, Luke chapter 23, verse 43. Can you read that verse itself? And he said to him, truly, I say to you, today, you will be with me in paradise. Okay, what is that? Jesus, Jesus said, to the, said to the criminal on the cross with him. Okay, there were two criminals uh, hanged on the cross with Jesus Christ. And to one of them who believed in Jesus Christ, Jesus said, truly, I tell you, today, 
you will be with me in paradise. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Okay, so we speak about the paradise here also. Okay, it is written there. And uh, the, the, the thing which you have to understand is when you read Ephesians chapter 4, verses 8 to 10, okay, with that we will close. Okay, uh, in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 8 to 10, we understand that the paradise was underneath the earth till the time of crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Listen very carefully. When you read chapter Ephesians chapter 4, verses 8 to 10, we understand that paradise was underneath the earth till the time of crucifixion of Jesus. Then after that, what happened? That's what written in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 15, that Satan was holding the power of the death in Hades and, that he, and, and, and he, uh, he, he made the Old Testament saints as captives there. Okay. Uh, can you read that only that verse, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 15? Yeah. And deliver and deliver all those who, who through fear of death were subject to a lifelong slavery. Uh, even 14 also. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Yes. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil. Who has the power of death. Okay, listen. So here we see that Satan was holding the power of the death. Okay. And he made the Old Testament saints as a captives. But when you read Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, that we already read, okay, uh, in Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, clearly says that after his death, Jesus took the key of death and of the Hades. Okay. Jesus took the key and he got the key of death and Hades. So after his death, Jesus descended into the lower parts of the earth and took all the people from that paradise and placed them in the paradise above. This is what we understand from these portions. You know, uh, after the death of Jesus Christ, he descended to the lower parts of the earth. That's what we read. Okay. So until that time, there were many Old Testament saints in that paradise, in that paradise. At the same time, Jesus Christ, after the death or after the burial, Jesus descended into the lower parts of the earth and took all the people, that means all the Old Testament saints from that paradise and placed them in the paradise above. That means until that time, the paradise was under near the earth. But after that, he just went up, you know, that is that is very clearly written in Hebrews chapter, uh, Hebrews chapter 2 verses uh, 15 and 14 and 15, and also uh, uh, Ephesians chapter uh, in that verse, okay, Ephesians also, okay, so it is very clearly Ephesians chapter 4 verses 8 to 10, so we have to understand that uh, Jesus has the key of the, the death and the Hades now, okay, so uh, this is the uh, last portion that I, I have to uh, explain with you. Uh, so we will uh, we will just uh, I mean pray and close this session. And before that, let us all submit ourselves with the mighty hand of God. And we have to remember one thing that we are the people those who are believing that I mean Jesus is holding the the key of death and the key of Hades. Okay. So we have something to boast about our Jesus Christ. I mean, Jesus Christ is belongs to us. Hallelujah. And we are belongs to the heaven. Okay? We are the people, those who are preparing ourselves to go to the heaven and we are not supposed to go to the hell. I mean, so let us pray in the presence of God so that, uh, I mean, God may help us and God may strengthen us and um, to, to have that insight in us that, uh, I mean, we will be in heaven with Jesus forever and ever. I mean, so I've been, I mean, they explain many things uh, uh, this evening also. So if I know that uh, you may have uh, many doubts or clarification about some of the things, but uh, I mean, if you have any clarification or you need, needed any clarification or question, you can just text to me, then I will try to give the answer or clarification for those questions in the next class. Amen.